So what's it like to look through a telescope for the very first time? Well, you know what? I thought I'd just go ahead and show it. Let's take someone who's never done this before and get their reaction looking through a telescope for the very first time. I'm finding a lot of beginners here have a, there's a disconnect between what the experience really is like and what their expectations are like. So getting a reaction might be a good thing here. You can also get a feel for how I work with people doing this for the very first time. So we have Joni back. She was quite popular with all of you last time. She's agreed to go ahead and do this for us. So today we're gonna to be doing this up on the Dartmouth campus and it's, the moon is just past first quarter. We've got at least two planets in the sky to look at. So there's a good variety of things to see. So again, this will be live and unscripted. She screws up, I screw up, you see it. And perhaps most importantly today, we have record warmth temperatures in the winter time. Normally you don't wanna be up there in the middle of the winter. So she has a little bit of time for her. She's already up on campus and has some time just before dusk before she has to go teach a class. So on paper, everything's coming together here. Let's hope Mr. Murphy and his law don't come get us. Okay, so we're here on the Dartmouth campus in the physics and astronomy department. Behind me, you can see one of the main domes. It's called Shattuck. It's got a big refractor in it. And behind there is a roll-off observatory with a 12-inch Meech McCasser grain in it. There's a building to the right here that's called Wilder, and you can see two domes on the roof. One of them contains a 12-inch Mead LX200, and the other has a C14 on a Paramount. So hopefully we'll be here later today, and I've gotten word that it's possible we may be able to get up on the roof of the building. That would be a great thing because, as you can see, there are a lot of buildings and trees around here that are obscuring our views. We're going to try to get a look at the moon, Jupiter, and or Saturn. So let's see what happens. Okay, here we're on the roof of Wilder. We actually made it and we're waiting for it to get dark. It looks like it's going to be a really good night. And tonight we're going to be able to see the moon, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus. We're going to be seeing three planets plus the moon, conditions permitting and assuming Murphy's Law doesn't get to us. That's the mother load of planets. Okay, so this, I deliberately brought a telescope that we talked about the last time in the video. This is the one that you said looked like a t-shirt launcher at the basketball <laughs> game. Okay. okay. So again, to remind you, the light is gathered with a mirror in the back. It's diverted with a secondary mirror and you actually look into the side of the front of the telescope here. Okay. So this is where you look. So when you're looking at a telescope, the most important thing to note is never ever point it at the sun. Okay. Whatever you do, don't point it at the sun. So Good to go. When you were a kid, I don't know, boys do this. Do you ever burn ants with a magnifying no, glass? No, never. Okay. Absolutely never. See, boys do this. We, <laughs> girls don't do this, okay? Oh, God. So picture that, except your eye is where the ant is. Okay. And this is much more powerful than the magnifying glass. Okay. So as the Thank whole time... Thank you for that image. <laughs> the whole time I've been doing this, I have never once heard of anybody getting into problems this way. Okay. So we do not want to be the first. Right. Okay, so it's getting pretty dark out now, and you can't see it. I'll try to get a picture of this maybe a little bit later, but the Moon, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus are all in an arc up in the sky, and I was just pointing this out to Joni. And the reason is because the solar system is like sort of a racetrack, with runners going around the track and the sun in the middle. So the Earth is sort of, sort of in the center of the oval, and we're watching these planets sort of go around out outside of us. So because of that, all of our planets and the moon even are going to appear to be in a line. So if you want to find where the planets are and you can't quite see one, because we can see the moon, Jupiter, and Venus right now, but we can't see Saturn yet, but I know it's in that arc between where Jupiter and Venus are. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at Venus first, because to me, this is by far the least interesting of all of them. Okay? <laughs> and yet the brightest. Yes. Okay, so Venus has phases like the moon. Okay, so you, some people who see Venus for the first time think they're actually looking at the moon. So I'm going to go ahead and aim the site here. But Venus is the bright point of light up there. Yep. And one question we have, you're wearing glasses, I'm wearing glasses. Do you wear your glasses while observing? Big question. Okay. If you tell me. Okay, so if you have simple nearsightedness or farsightedness, take your glasses off. Okay. Okay, so there's a focuser here, there's a knob. And if it's not in focus, you just turn the knob until it is in focus. Okay. This knob? Yes. Or okay. they're both the same. Oh, okay. 
but I'll give you a hint. If you're nearsighted, you're gonna rack the focuser in. You're gonna be turning the knob this okay. way. Okay. In fact, I have a stupid human trick that I've learned. When I take people on doing this. <laughs> I find this. that vaguely insulting. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is my stupid human trick. Okay. <laughs> so when I watch them rack the focuser in and out, and I'll tell them you're nearsighted or you're farsighted. Oh. And they'll be like, how do you know that? I said, well, because I watched you rack the focuser in and out. So go ahead and take a look and see if that is in focus for you. So I just look right there? Yeah, just look right there. So what I will normally do is... Oh, wow. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you see how it kind of looks like the moon? Yes, it does. Okay. Now, some people are left-eyed and some people are right-eyed. Uh-oh, I just lost it. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Did you lose I've it? I've gone blind. <laughs> I don't see okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I lost it. Oh, wait. There it is. Are you supposed to have your eye pressed against it? Uh, or about just... a half an inch away works. Half an inch yeah. away. All right. And now I'm an amateur astronomer. Yes. Now you That's see how all it, it took. <laughs> you see how it kind of looked like the moon? Oh, it did uh, look yeah. like the moon. So you can almost fool people saying, hey, you're looking at the moon. Oh, you're yeah. Not, you're looking at Venus. So that changes based on the time of the year and when you okay. happen to look at it. But sometimes it looks like a crescent. Sometimes it looks like a full moon. It depends when you happen to be looking yeah. at it. Well, now it's a crescent. Okay. So again, I don't find that terribly interesting, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> My bar is much lower than yours, Okay. <laughs> All right, so... No, I thought it was beautiful. Okay, so now we're looking at Jupiter. So Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system. Okay. It's really big. I mean, you could take all the other planets, they would fit inside Jupiter. So Jupiter is about 10 times the width of the Earth. Wow. So if you take the Earth and you stack 10 of them across, yeah, roughly or so, you get, that's how many it takes to go across the okay. surface of Jupiter. So go ahead and take a look at that and see what you think. All right. So oh, wow. Your hand should probably be here, so not, yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay, can you see it? Oh, yeah, well, if it's that big, it's hard to miss. Okay, so do you see that there are four sort of stars in a line? One of yes. them's really far out. Yes, I see do the four see that stars? clearly, yep. Okay, try focusing, see if you... It's pretty clear. Okay, so those four bright points of light are four moons of Jupiter. All right. And Jupiter moves really, really fast. Hmm. So our Earth takes 24 hours or so to spin around on its axis. Okay. Jupiter only takes about 10 hours. Hmm. So all of the features you see on Jupiter, if you were to stay up all night long, say, you could actually see everything that was on Jupiter if you would just stay up because eventually everything's going to come back around. Is it back? Okay. Yep. Did I do something? You did not do something. Where did it go then? So what happens is, if you look pretty closely, it's moving. Yeah. Can you see that it's moving? I mean, it's kind of slow, but if we were to sit here for a couple of minutes, it would go out of the field of view again. Oh. And yeah, that, you can see that. You can see that. Okay, so what you're seeing is the rotation of the Earth. So when the Earth turns, it moves everything out of the way. Okay. So I have telescopes that will track and will do all of that for you, but since we're on the roof, that stuff weighs a lot, and I just didn't feel like dragging all that stuff up here. So when those moons, they move around really fast, yeah. when they move to the front of the planet, they actually cast a shadow on the planet itself. So you'll see a little black dot, hmm. and we call that a shadow transit. That's one of my favorite things to do with a telescope. Um, you can actually watch the shadow of the planet march across the surface, and it takes several hours, and it's sort of a geeky thing you can do, like my telescope's better than yours, I can see it better than yours, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, so now we're looking at the moon. And I've got it in the low-power eyepiece, so go ahead and take a look. All right. You should have no oh. problem seeing this. No glasses? <laughs> wow. I can see it right there. Yeah. Okay. Huh. So the old story is Isaac Asimov, one of the great science fiction writers. Whenever, when the first time somebody showed him the moon through a telescope, his comment was, wow, it has craters. <laughs> that was one of my first thoughts, but... <laughs> Good. <laughs> It didn't seem like a fresh idea, so that's amazing, though. Even though you've seen so many images on, you know, photographs, this is incredible. Yeah, what we tell people is the moon actually looks better live than it does through any picture. You, yeah. you just can't duplicate the experience of seeing it live. Something. And you can see it's moving, right? Now that you say that. It's, it's not quite centered anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the crater in the middle it's sort of just off the Terminator on the brighter side of the moon. Yep. That is called Copernicus. 
what you what you might want to do if you can try this grab the front of the telescope and just very gently move it up and away from you very gently you should push it back to the middle is it working yeah look at that good if you can do that you're, you're doing really well i'm a natural whoops now i lost it i spoke too soon i spoke too soon well, yeah, I can't see it on your eyeball. Yeah, now, now, <laughs> now my eyeball's no longer bright. I did do it for a moment, though. Yeah. And I think I broke your telescope. <laughs> okay, so here's the last object of the evening. It's Saturn, and we're losing the light here, so we're not going to be able to be filming much longer here. But go ahead and take a look. All Saturn right. is the planet with the rings. There it is. Okay. So if you look, you can see the rings. Yes, clearly. And there'll be a star-like object. I think it's to the upper right. Yep, I okay. see it. That's Titan. It's its largest moon. So you're oh. actually seeing a moon of Saturn wow. next to it. Now I can die happy. OK. That's so cool. This is my favorite next to Earth, of course. <laughs> wow, that is so neat. <laughs> And again, the track, push it away from you just a tiny, tiny bit, and then pull up. There we go. Got it? Oh, yeah. Good. That's actually doing really well, because I train people to do this, and even after several nights, some of them can't do it. So well, you're doing pretty well. I have a steady hand. That's amazing. Oh, there it goes again. Okay, so we're back inside. It's been a couple of months. It's been a couple of months before we could get back together again. But uh, we're down off the roof. And uh, do you have any impressions of what happened when we were up there? Well, it was stunning views. It was freezing. And your house is almost as warm as it was out there that night. <laughs> okay. <So laughs> well, the Turn your heat up, Ed. <laughs> We can arrange that. <laughs> well, so the reason I point this out is I said this in the intro is I think in an age of 4K TV and video games, people have an unrealistic expectation of what happens when they look through a telescope. Hmm. So when you saw what you saw, some of the things I think in Saturn, you had to actually kind of dig around to find what you were looking at. So it's a subtle thing, but that's something like we like to try oh, to get across to people. Hmm. Well, it was subtle, but all of a sudden it's in your face. Yes, so you have to learn to see. It was remarkable. Yes, it really some, was. But it, you're right, it took a while. Yeah, it's something we have to tell people. It's not right away. It can take a while before you see something. Yeah. So I can say, having done this with many people before, uh, I would rank you as probably a little bit above average. Yeah, so... God, that's like my IQ. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if you were to try to do this and pursue this your own, on your own in the future, I think you'd probably be pretty good at it. Well, I gotta get above yeah, average. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So, you know, we, we were up on the roof there, and the part of the roof that we were on had a railing on it so you don't fall over because Thank there God. were the two domes over there. But if you recall, on the other side of the roof, there wasn't a railing there. Remember, we walked and we took pictures at the edge there. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the guy led us up on the roof, and he said, I'm going home now, and you can stay up here as long as you like, but uh, as soon as you leave... Um, you know, the door's going to lock behind you, and you can't get back on the roof. So we got done doing what we were doing. I pulled the equipment back inside the door, and I closed the door, and, and then what happened? Well, you distracted me, and that's when I left my purse on the roof, on the outside of the locked door. Left the purse on the roof? <laughs> on the yeah, roof. Yeah, who's going to go up there and yeah. steal a purse, right? So. so I was actually quite proud of myself until that point because... We were actually ahead of schedule. We had a lot of stuff to do, oh, and yeah. you had to go teach your class. And I was patting myself on the back because we were ahead of schedule. And then we locked the purse on the roof. So now, <laughs> thank I'm, you for <laughs> saying we. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm. A couple of things going through my head. Number one is how are we going to get the purse off the roof? And number two, by the time we get done dealing with this, you may no longer be in time to teach your class. Oh, yeah. I didn't so, know you were so worried. I was, I was concerned. So, I'm sorry. But the guy who had left had given me his phone number, but he had already gone home. So he was very nice, wasn't he? He was very he, nice. He was, he was very nice. But, but I don't know this guy. I mean, he went home. He's probably kicking back and watching TV. Then he gets a phone call from me. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out okay. We got you there just in time. Yes. Yeah. Well, and he drove back to campus, 
It was the key. We went out well, on the roof. All the way, all the way up to the roof and had to get it again. I got my purse. Yeah. I got home in time to teach on Zoom. Yeah. It, was all, it was all good. Okay, good. All right. Any other thoughts? No, I think, Ed, you should take everybody out on some roof and show them. Well, I the do this a lot, not on a sky. roof, and but we don't always have the yeah. adventure we did. But uh, It was I very special okay. and worth leaving my purse on the roof. Okay. <laughs> it was very special, truly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.